Hi everyone, I'm Nigel Saunders from the Bonsai Zone. And I'm Scott Winnard from Let's Do Bonsai. And today we're going to be working on this Thuja occidentalis or mountain style cedar. Scott and I were looking at this cedar yesterday, trying to come up with a plan for the future styling of it. And I thought I better go back in time three years ago and look at the previous video of this tree where I'd styled it for the first time. So after the spring repotting this year, the tree's growing really well. Um, new foliage all over, it's growing really strongly, so it's a good time to do some uh, styling on it. I'll rotate the tree around 360 degrees so you can see what's going on with it. So this is our front view. We're rotating around. You can see our branch that we bent there. We're around the back of the tree now. Left side. And back to the front. So as you can see over the years, the last three years, this tree has changed quite significantly. The apex here has grown from a small little uh, branch that was coming out of the top here and we have all this foliage grown in and the branches have, have regrown uh, and we've, we've got quite a bit of pruning to do. The original intent for this tree was to style it like a tree that's just barely surviving on a mountain top. So it grows in spring, grows as much as it can and then in winter it gets beaten back again. And the next spring it grows again and it gets beaten back again so it's it's always fighting for survival and parts of the tree are dying off. So it grows in this really contorted, twisted form, but it has its own beauty. This tree is a real challenge to style. It has a lot of uh, what I would call bizarre features on it. It has a, a really thick root coming off the trunk that curls around this branch. Um, so it's, it's not your typical tree. And Scott and I have been discussing if you just had one feature like this on the tree, your eye is kind of drawn to it. Uh, so that's why in the last time I repotted this tree, I raised it up so the roots are kind of another kind of feature on the tree and it makes this sort of blend in or become less noticeable. Um, I'm going to remove the moss here just to get a better look at the, the trunk structure. This root we can't really remove it because if I rotate the tree around, that's supplying, the, the curly root is supplying most of the energy to the trunk and there's only a few roots coming off the base here. So if I were to remove that root, I think we would get severe inverse taper on the trunk. There would be this big gaping hole here and there'd only be a few roots supporting the trunk. So I don't think that's an option. I think we've got to keep this as part of the yeah I think we as, need to of the tree it's embrace the anomaly is exactly that's a good term I have this kind of horn sticking out here uh, originally this was going to be the front of the tree sort of coming in this direction and so far it's still looking like a fairly good front we have these kind of cascading branches on this side of the tree here's a look at those long cascading branches so to me that looks like a branch that got flattened by the snow in the winter and it's kind of pushed down to the ground level. So I like that. It is very long. At the moment it looks like it would be hanging off the edge of a cliff or something. So I think if we kept this branch long, we would yeah. probably have to elevate the tree to look like it's on a cliff face or something. So maybe a tall pot and have this cascading off the edge of the pot. Sure. There's a trunk or a branch up here. If this is kind of the front view, the main trunk comes up here and then a, there's a parallel branch here yeah. that just confuses my eye. Front. Yeah, it just, you nice. don't know what to look at. It needs to be simplified. So that would either have to be removed or shortened and made a, you know, some dead wood there. Or I think we would have to bend this out of the way quite a severe bend and you know maybe even risk cracking the branch off which 
would probably be okay to you know move it off to the one side so you're looking in at the front here yeah. possibility uh, the overall height of the tree needs to be shortened again so you can see some there's a weak shoot here that's too weak uh, there's a nice shoot here there's a couple around here so that height could be reduced right down again to make it a really short tree I don't want it growing tall because as I said I want this tree look to look like it's just beaten down every year it never it never gains enough strength to hardly grow yeah, it's it tries always to go, tries to grow through the spring and the summer and then winter comes and puts just, it back down yeah and it kills 70 percent of the tree and then what's left tries to grow again the next year and yeah that's where we're at um, there's a lot of thick branches up top on the tree here that don't look good um, <clears throat> usually on a tree the higher you get up or the higher you travel up the trunk the branches get thinner as it goes up uh, so that's kind of competing in size yeah it's almost the thickness of the main trunk and it doesn't look good no. it's too heavy and you can't other than making it deadwood there's not much you can do about that thickness change unless you grow the main trunk yeah you let all this grow for another three years try and thicken this up and you keep this branch pruned tightly then you might eventually get it to make sense that the trunk would be twice this thickness and this and would almost stay the same yes we'll be making lots of decisions on this tree today that there's no easy styling <laughs> solution for this tree trial and error yeah and we'll just have to tackle one thing at a time and see how the tree looks and just yeah just take it one step at a time and try and get through every branch and do the best we can and it will never look like a, a typical bonsai or a tree a beautiful show tree no <laughs> yeah it'll always look like this twisted contorted uh strange looking tree and that's what we're going to go with we that's what it is and we're not going to change that okay so we've got some uh, really tough decisions to to make right at the beginning here to try and choose our front um, the front that jumps out straight away would be would be round about here uh, to try and disguise the the wraparound route that we've got back here uh, but maybe we might want to utilize that make a feature of that and have that as the thing we want to target into um, in bonsai it wouldn't be your normal thing to be accepted but we're not normal um, so we can we can make the decision to to make this our focus we've got some lovely texture on the on the route that's wrapping round we've got some beautiful roots that are coming down and into the bonsai soil there uh, we may have to lose or uh, gin back some of these uh, other features that will dis distract us from from looking in at the uh, at the feature but you know that's that's one possible solution uh, but if we come back round to the what was the original front um, we've got the main trunk going up where we can disguise and hide the uh, the route that's our problem um, but then we would obviously either have to as we've already said drop this branch maybe bend it out of the way or possibly lose it entirely which would it would be a shame because it's a, a nice nice branch with some good ramification on it that we can possibly do something with um, so for me there's two choices for the front and it's it's either somewhere around here uh, and trying to move or remove this branch entirely or coming round to the the unwanted and making that our main feature and using that as our main front although it would be different to what anybody else would ever expect Scott and I have looked at the tree and we've looked at all the features of the tree the good features the bad features the strange features the normal features and so now it comes down to a decision making time where we've got to pick the front for the tree and um, I think when you are making decisions on your tree 
it's important to listen to everyone, but in the end, it comes down to you making the decision. It's your tree. You have to style it how you, how you want it to look. Um, it's not a committee decision. Um, if you have too many people looking at a tree, everyone has their own idea of what the tree should look like, and in the end, it just confuses the person who has to do the work. They, they have to listen yeah. to six different opinions and one person might do take this branch off and one person might keep that branch on and one person might bend it down and it, it just but you can take all that on board and you can filter it all out to your own personal preferences and what you like and what you want to happen to the tree yeah and hopefully make the right decision for yourself rather than later regretting thinking yeah it was a great idea but it's not what i really wanted for yeah, the tree. that's true. So I think, you know, just having that vision in our heads that we want this to look like a, a weather-beaten tree, I think that'll help our styling decisions. Uh, Scott mentioned that, you know, this is a possible fun, front featuring that, that root that curls around another branch. Um, and then there's this view where it's almost hidden. So I'm thinking going somewhere in between so looking in at the, the front of the tree, where you see this feature, but it's not really obvious that it's a, that it curls around a branch. So you look at this feature and then you see it and you say, what's that feature? And you have to move. And around. then you have to turn your head and look around and go, wow, that curls right around a branch. Is that ever strange? So it invites you to, into to look at the tree and you then have to investigate what's going on with the tree. So you kind of explore the design. You don't want to show, if I show this view, you're showing everything to the viewer right away. Well, that's what the tree looks like. Uh, there's nothing, by. yeah, there's nothing kind of left to explore. So, um, and if we hide it, then no one ever sees that feature and maybe it looks like an ordinary tree or Maybe it looks like a flaw you're trying to hide around the back. True. Um, so I think going halfway, yeah, no, I, a compromise is I the best solution. That. I think we want to show that as a feature, but not make it obvious. A semi-feature, semi-hidden, semi-shown. Yeah. Come and, come and have a good look, find me, find my flaws. If that makes any sense, <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I think we've actually come to a decision here for where we're going to have the front. So I'm just going to turn it towards me. And the front is going to be, I will place a little marker in here. So you, and then I can turn it back to you. Uh, you'll see, if you can see that straight through, that's the front, which is going to be straight through the middle of where the trunk and the root branch that's coming around over the top is dividing in that in that zone so we've got a small ingress point there which is adding to the features uh, we're probably going to have to lose some of this branch that's coming out make that a bit of dead wood uh, but we can save the branch on the side now it's not compacting on the the main front of the of the tree so we can make a decision on that as to whether we're going to bend it out of the way uh, trim it prune it back uh, yeah more decisions to make as we go forward okay so our next step is going to be trying to make this an acceptable feature at the side of the tree here we're going to try and uh, take it from here and gin this out carve it through to a to a point because we need we feel that we need to keep the length rather than taking it all the way back and losing it uh, and with the weather beating this that we're going for it'd be nice to have this little bit of dead wood just to help explain that every year this poor little fella is beaten down uh, and beaten down again and again uh, so this little bit this little gin that we're going to create here will hopefully help explain that Okay, so I've got a fishtail gouge here and uh, I'm going to start uh, taking some of this away and proceed to make this gin. So here we go with that.
looks like it's going well, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a few knotty parts yeah. that are, a hard to get need through. a little bit of extra pressure. Yeah. Um, but we're getting through. It's quite a quite a satisfying uh, feel as you. I like using the hand tools. Yeah. Uh, I like the peace and quiet. I like the skill of using your hands um, as you're slicing through and you you get it quite how you want it I tell everyone I get into bonsai to get away from machinery and noise <laughs> not to fire up chainsaws and carving tools and <laughs> and here we are yeah I'd rather listen to the birds singing in the background than grinding machines going just to get these side bits. Oh, that this is a a nice angle for me. Yeah. And that's coming up lovely. To be fair, it's a case of really deciding how far we go down. Yeah. Uh, how slim do you want it? Or? Yeah. I mean, if the slimmer it is, the longer it's been there getting beaten down. So the. The thicker we leave it, maybe the uh, the longer we've got to keep it. Right. Here's a look at the deadwood section now, carved to a point, and it, it looks quite natural. Our next task will be to bend this branch down. So we we want to position it down so it looks like it got flattened by snow or avalanches or whatever. Um, there is a real danger that this branch could crack as I'm bending it down, and. Even if it cracks, it may still have a living vein going to the branch that will keep it alive and then it'll callus over the wound. Uh, if it bends down and cracks and the branch dies, we'll make it dead wood like the branch on this side, so it'll kind of match that. Um, and we're going to bend it down and tie it to the lip of the pot. So I'll be putting some holes in the lip of the pot, running a wire up around the branch and that'll hold it in place. And the branch will only have to stay there for maybe one growing season and it, it should stay it should stay in place in that position but generally as it grows it'll start to go upright again so um, it may have to be wired or held in that position for several years until it's permanently kind of grown in that position so that's the next step we'll put some holes in the lip of the pot and prepare to bend this branch down and wire it in place. I'm going to try and poke some holes or carve some holes in the edge of the pot here with these with the fishtail gouge while we still have it out. Oh there I go. I, I got it through. There, there's a hole in there now. And I, I think I'll make two holes so we can kind of loop the wire around the top and hold it in place underneath. Yeah, there, I've got two holes now. I've got a bit of uh, a bicycle tire inner tube that I can wrap around the branch to help prevent wire marks in the branch after it's bent down. So Scott's gonna run the wire through the holes. We'll loop it around the branch and then we'll tie it down at the bottom. So if you can get it in there, there. I think we'll just use the one wire, eh? I think we'll get away with that, yeah. We'll try it anyway. Okay, so, yeah, this is a big bend on this branch. I don't know what'll happen. Cedars are quite flexible, but maybe not this flexible. So, here I go. So far, so good. It's coming down. Oh, I don't like doing this. It's going to break. Just do it slowly. It's very close to being in the correct position. I'll wrap the rubber around the branch now. And I'm wrapping it around several times because there will be a lot of pressure on the branch from the wire and it, it, it'll leave you know, quite a severe mark if you don't protect the branch. Okay, so we're down now. The wire is going around the rubber and through the other hole, just like that. And we're twisting it together at the bottom, Scott is, and 
I never thought that branch would be that flexible. <laughs> this zombie is a zombie apocalypse. apocalypse. <laughs> Run! <laughs> there we go. I've been looking at the tree from the front and we tried to solve one problem, but we just created all kinds of other problems. I don't like this branch being parallel to the ground. It doesn't look good. This one kind of swoops up into the air and I think this branch needs to kind of match that style. This branch kind of has an angle going upwards and I think we've got to raise this branch a little so it kind of curves upwards a bit. The problem with that is that it then competes with the branch coming out the back here. So we're thinking if we raise this one up, then this one might have to come up also so the, the two branches don't crisscross. If I bring this branch up, and then we've got congestion in this area. We've got two branches that are parallel branches, one above each other, and I think one of them would have to go. Um, so I'm going to raise this branch for the next step and then reassess the situation. That's pretty good height there, actually. Yeah. It matches the other branch. Do you want me to lower it, lift it a little bit, just to see if you can see any different from the back there? Okay. So I'll... Yeah, that's, that's going worse. Yeah. Too low. So that's our limit at the moment. I could maybe bring it up a little bit higher. A little higher, I think. Yeah. It'll match that other branch, the angle, better. We have to move the rubber. Maybe yeah, we can re yeah. reseat that rubber. Move this down. That looks much better. It looks more natural too, to have a bit of an upsweep on the branch. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yep. So once again, solving one problem gives us another problem. Uh, we notice we've got this one small branch here coming up in the middle. Uh, and then after investigating where it was coming from, we can see it's attached to a root that drops down here. Uh, and then as we looked further in, there's actually a, a larger branch where it's splitting in into two uh, that we've got here that we're probably going to need to to bring out and around uh, and maybe use some wire to try and reposition that into that sort of position. Uh, what we'll do is we'll put some, some wires in and then decide whereabouts we're going to have it in how high or how low. So We're that's go. maximum height. I maybe. would say a little lower. Okay, so if we just drop about drop. no, a little higher now. About there. Right about there, I think. Right about there. So we will twist that off. Yeah, I think we've got that where we need it. Yeah. I've pinched the wire in at the top underneath, so it will it will restrict okay. how it can go left and right around the yeah because we around want the pot. We're trying to get these branches kind of radial, aren't we? Coming out from yeah. the trunk rather than. If this Rather is your trunk and they're all coming off at strange angles, sure. we're trying to almost make the tree look natural. <laughs> I'm coming in now having a look at the branch situation here. And we've corrected this branch, which looks good. This branch was kind of naturally in a nice position. We adjusted that second part of that branch where it divides into a nice position behind there. And now, all these branches are swooping upwards nicely, but we've got that one cascading branch at the back that it starts off at the trunk. And if I can rotate it around right here, it starts off, it comes out of the trunk and then it dives down below the lip of the pot. I'm thinking that we don't want that one cascading down, that we want to raise it up in between this branch and the one above it, for now anyway, and See how that kind of, you get three branches coming out from the trunk and it kind of looks like a windswept design more than a kind of a cascading design. And if we look at it from the front here, got all these branches reaching upwards and this one branch dives down and it just looks out of place. So I think I've got to bring that up like that. Instead of wiring the branch up into position, um, which you could do, uh, we're going to put a prop underneath it, which will support it from the lip of the pot to the branch. 
and we've kind of measured the length of the, of the piece of wood we need in there to position the branch in between the other two. So Scott's going to put that in position now and we'll have a look and see how it uh, how it does. That's how it in, looks. in there, yeah. That looks good. So back to the front of the tree. So it's, yeah, everything's kind of flowing out from the trunk nicely now. There's not all this crisscrossing of branches and just general confusion. It, it kind of flows a little better. Scott and I have been looking at the tree carefully now, actually for quite a quite some time. Um, we've got, I mentioned earlier that there was these two parallel branches. There's one branch here and there's another one directly above it on top. And Scott made a good analogy that it looks like a ladder, that you climb up to this branch, you step up here, step up here. And there's just too many branches in this area. And we thought about, well, what happens if you take out this one and keep this one? We examined that possibility. But this is the better branch. And then we thought, well, this one has to go. If you look at it from this view, you've got the root here, you've got this branch, and this one's in between. It's just too many branches. So we decided this something has to be done here. And we thought, well, do we make it dead wood like this piece up front? And we thought, well, no, that doesn't solve our problem. We still have the ladder steps there. So we've decided that we need to remove this branch and make a flush cut. And we also examined, you know, how much foliage is attached to that branch and we kind of separated it. We didn't want to, you know, take all the branches off the back of the tree, uh, all the greenery. So we decided, yeah, everything's good to remove that branch entirely with a flush cut. It'll just solve that congestion problem and get rid of those ladder type branches. Okay, so Scott is going to come in with the branch pruners and he's going to try and get a fairly flush cut with that branch. Yeah, we're in there. So? Big cut coming up. Here I go. So here I go. <laughs> and timber. <laughs> That looks really good. That was a good cut. Yeah, it came off really well. Yeah. So we'll come around to the front now and have a look to see how it looks now that we've removed our problem branch. And you can see that, yeah, it looks, looks quite a bit better. Uh, as we look through, we're not seeing that extra branch. It's opened it up. We can see, see through and see in nicely there. And it kind of, you know, it was very busy in this area and now it's opened up and it's opened up again and if we come round to the side where we initially saw it it's nowhere near as busy as it was uh, the cut went quite well there it doesn't need much tidying up i think we're good with that and uh, yeah it'd be a little bit difficult to climb this ladder now i would say nigel <laughs> after a lunch break we're back and we've been looking at the structure of the tree and there's all the branches kind of bother us because they're they're really thick branches coming off the trunk they're you know getting almost to be the size of the trunk itself um, there's, that one there. there's one here and there's one over this side it's very straight there's no taper no change of direction and it, it's too thick compared to the size of the trunk it just it doesn't look like a miniature version of a tree. It no. looks like a garden tree or something. So we've looked at all the possibilities. We've been discussing it for probably an hour, I think. About an hour, yeah. And the ultimate decision is? The ultimate decision is we're going to create deadwood out of them. We're going to cut the branch off shorter. So this is a long kind of deadwood branch and we're going to make it shorter as it goes up towards the apex of the tree so we'll probably cut this one in half here and make this deadwood and then the one around here will cut off even shorter and make that a deadwood branch too and then we're going to see what the tree looks like it's going to look like a probably a stick in a pot with all this you know all this foliage pushed out way out see that, that was another thing we wanted 
we wanted to bring all the foliage in and make a compact tree, but all these branches, there's nothing growing in towards the trunk. It's all way out. And yeah, there's just <laughs> there's just nothing going for it. Kind of nothing to work with there. It's just so remove the problem. Okay, so we're going to come in and take off this branch here. Uh, we've got the length of this one, which is about that. Uh, so we want this one to be shorter, maybe two thirds of, of what this one is. So we're looking at about here. So here we come in with the pruners and we will go for it about here. So big cut coming up and here I go. The next step is to remove this upper branch that's really thick. So it's going to be even shorter than the last one. So I, I'm thinking coming in right about here. So here I go. Done. So the next thing we're doing is we are looking at our apex here, uh, trying to decide which is the best branches to use as our leaders, whether to keep the existing or try and choose a new set of leaders or leader. Um, this branch that comes off to the one side here is far too thick so we're probably going to have to do something with that, maybe maybe lose that. Uh, and as we've been looking we've noticed obviously we've got some lovely shoots coming out here so the thought is we could maybe come back to these shoots um, trim back to a suitable point, allow it to grow, allow the shoots to grow and then use one of these for our new leader. Okay so we've decided that the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this larger branch here. We're going to take it back all the way as far as we can. So we're going to come in with the branch pruners, try not to disturb our new and here I go. Done. The apex looks much better now. So the next step will be to reduce it down, getting it as compact as possible, and allowing all those little shoots to grow. So I'll take it back to some nice green, healthy branches. Uh, maybe here. And Back to here. Um, I think I'll take this one entirely off. It's just doesn't have any branches down low, so I can lose that one. And then I'll shorten the one off to the side here to here. Like that. And I'll shorten this upper one to here. And that's got the apex quite compact. So this will be the start of our new tree. You know, we'll be carefully grooming these branches for a future branch structure. We've pruned the apex of the tree back as far as I can get it to make it compact. And I think it's time now to bring the rest of the tree back in as far as we can, compacting the overall size of it so it's not this big sprawling bush. Okay, so we're gonna come round the tree now uh, we're going to try and prune back as, as tight as we can, making it nice and compact. Um, trying to pick places on each of the branches uh, where it divides from the one branch into the two. Um, so if I just work my way across this branch, I would be taking it back to here on that one. So this is our branch now pruned back. Um, as tight and as compact as we can take it. There's a branch coming out from the trunk here which is a nice thickness but it, it comes out and then it kind of curls back around like a, almost a spiral. Um, if you try and reposition it so it's coming kind of in a radial pattern from the the trunk it, it still has this weird bend in it at the base here so I think the best thing to do is to reduce this branch back, taking the whole top off it and developing one of these new shoots down here as a new leader for that branch and kind of keeping that branch compact so it's not so long and developing it a better direction. 
so and so it has some movement too right now it's just a big long straight branch so so what I'm going to do is just prune it back short I'll be on the safe side and leave a few branches on for now and then as these shoots grow I can further reduce it in future so off it goes like that I've stepped back and had a look at that branch and I'm not really liking it because the way it goes up um, even if I developed one of these shoots I would still have the base of the branch kind of coming up um, it's pretty hard to bend uh, it could be bent down but it would still always have this kind of an arch shape to it and all the other branches in this lower section are dead so I, I think I'm going to remove that branch entirely it just doesn't flow nicely with the rest of the tree so off it comes I'm going to remove the whole branch like that it's gone we both stood back and had a good look at the tree and we're not liking it it's it's looking like a stick in a fruit bowl or an upside down umbrella and this is the handle and all the spokes are coming out but we're going to try trimming back all the branches so we don't have this you know curved effect and it doesn't look as round from the top and see what it looks like the other possibility if it still doesn't look good we may make it all dead wood all this lower part so the only living part of the tree is up top and then try and develop that into something that looks like a tree um, this is a really bizarre looking tree and we knew that right from the start so we're trying to make the best of it that we can we're trying to make it the best it can be and it hasn't got a best <laughs> it, may, it may not have a best <laughs> but we'll do what we can we'll we'll try and save it as a a bonsai and uh, try and make something that looks interesting and unique and still looks like a miniature tree so after even more deliberation and communication as to what on earth is happening with this tree we've decided that our main problem windswept branch out of the back is pretty much going to have to go so we're going to take it back to about here allowing for a bit of deadwood at that point and then we've got a branch on the inside which it's got plenty on it we'll be able to pull it back you know train it to to replace this branch um, or any other which way that we may choose to do in the future so another big cut and uh, here we go mm -hmm. done I stepped back and had a look at it from the front and it's getting better we're cutting away our problems as Scott said um, it's looking more compact the base is looking better and it's it's slowly becoming more tree like so we're going to continue we're going to keep pruning back and getting everything as tight as possible the next step is I'll clean up this branch that emerges from this curly root um, the first thing I'm going to do is remove these top two uh, it has that characteristic cedar branch where it comes out and it arcs up and they kind of arc up and then they arc up again and arc up so you get that kind of a look to cedar branches so yeah I'll remove this one first like that and then I'll come in and try and get in here and clean it all up maybe even a little more there like that so now it has that kind of cedar branch structure to it I will have to make the branch more compact too so I'm looking for a good place to cut it and I think right here and right here here and I think I'll take this right back it's a little risky taking it this far back but 
If it dies, I can always remove it. And that's... I can do a little pinching here, but... Uh, that's about as compact as that branch will get. Okay, so again, after even more deliberation and, and conference and time, um, if looking at it from the front here, we could, we're just thinking that this is just 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 too much. Um, we wanted to try and try and keep it and bring it in as part of the uh, overall design, but it's too busy. It's it's too heavy, too hectic, uh, and the old saying, "Less is more," I think, is uh, coming into play here. So, the decision's been made. We're going to remove the. Uh, two major branches that we were reciting and replacing. Um, we're going to remove them back to where we've positioned them and we're going to let them uh, die off and treat them as dead wood uh, later on. Um, so let's get cutting. So Scott was the bearer of bad news for these branches but I'll do the dirty work here cutting them off. So I'm going to cut them off just past the rubber pads so they'll still stay in position, which we position them nicely. We just want to make them dead wood now. So here goes the first one. Like that. And then the one around the back here. Take that one off too. So here I go. Just like that. We're going to have a look at the tree now. From the front and then decide on these other branches that are remaining what we want to keep if any of them it's looking a lot better now um, we're just going to do some final tidying up work of the uh, branches at the back here um, we're going to uh, trim the dead wood smarten that up make that look nice um, and then just see if there's any other little things that we need to do and then we'll be back with you here's a close-up of the apex of the tree and in the previous video, I cut the apex off and I was developing a little side shoot as the new leader. And you can see it's done that. In three years, the new leader's thickened up and it blends in nicely with the trunk. However, we still have this little uh, lump here that needs to be carved away. So I'll do that next. So here I go. So I'll just come in and nibble away at it. making it flush. So I've got to come further than that. That's getting better. I'm going to, going to take a little bit more off the bottom here. Like that. And a bit more off here. like that. That's looking quite nice I think. The evening is coming to an end. Scott and I did get the tree pruned up tonight. And tomorrow, we're going to repot it into a plastic training pot. After all this work on the tree, I'm not really sure I like the tree or not. It's, it's a bit of an ugly duckling to me. What do you think, Sky? I think you're right with that one. Um, every time we had a problem, we would find a solution, fix that problem, remove the problem, and then that would present, what, 10 more problems and would resolve those problems. Um, and it, it honestly looks that the answer was just cut the problems away. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think we've done a pretty good job with what we had. I think we've made it the best it can be. It is possible now that we've removed so many branches that there could be a better front to the tree. Um, so we'll examine that tomorrow when we go to repot it. Um, we'll, we'll study the tree again because it's quite different now than it was when we originally started. It's uh, missing a bit of branch, uh, 
missing a, a bit, bit of foliage. Yeah, a bit of foliage and branches. So, yeah, we'll we'll give it another fresh look at it tomorrow morning and decide what to do.